Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the interview of Swiss TC and with us together we have Maruna and she is dressed as a really proper Rave King, Skeleton King earlier. Um, what is actually your personal reason to dress up as Rave King? Are you exceptionally good, exceptionally bad at a hero? Do you have to become the Rave King to get better at Dota? I actually uh, cosplay for the artistic aspect of it, so um, might be a bit boring, but I choose designs that I just uh, feel interested in creating in real life. So I don't really choose uh, heroes like based on characteristic traits, like I want to be especially evil or something. I just choose it because I think it looks really cool. Yeah. Um, as a cosplayer, you often make your cost oh, all the time you make your costume yourself. Uh, what is it actually made of? I heard of a material named Warpla, which is apparently plastic that gets really uh, malleable uh, if, it's get if it gets hot. Yes, Warpla is very popular, but it's really expensive. Um, so this costume is actually made from EVA foam. It's um, a soft foam. It's similar to like when you go camping and you have those mats you sleep on. It's mm. pretty similar to that. Um, it's pretty cheap and it's easy to work with because if I made this from Warbler, I would be um, not making rent anymore probably. Um, on the topic of cost, how much actually does uh, making a costume uh, cost in terms of money? If you don't want to, want to answer the question, it's okay as well. Oh, it's fine. Um, well, it really depends on like what kind of costume you make. You can make a costume for 20 euros or you can spend 2,000 euros on it. Um, this costume and most of my other costumes cost around three to 400 euros though. And how much, how much time goes into it? I mean, three to 400 euros, that is uh, just purely material, but you work a lot on, uh, a lot on it as well. Uh, yes, I usually spend between three or four months um, working on it. And in the start, a bit less. And then when you hit that two month uh, mark until it's the convention, then you start working like a lot, basically all the free time you have. You're not new co to conventions. You have attended a lot. Um, what, have your be what have been your greatest successes so far? Uh, my greatest successes? Well, if we speak about contests, um, last year at this event, ESL won 2000. 15, um, I placed third, and at uh, DreamHack Winter the same year I also placed third, so that was a competition success, but um, I also have like individual successes when you just see someone and they just like get so happy from seeing you, that's like very, very special moments that I have in my mind still. Mm. Um. In terms of cosplaying, do you do, uh, do is it, does it enough to pay the bills or do you have a real life job? Oh, you don't earn money with cosplay. You need to be like a really famous cosplayer to earn any money with it. Um, so I don't earn any money with it. And of course, I have, a, I have a student job at the side to earn some money for it. So basically, the best you can do is you win uh, the cost to travel to another event to cosplay there. Yeah, although most contests don't have a lot of money in it. So it's a lot more about honor and glory of winning. So you don't go into cosplay competitions to win money because you will never, it will never be worth it. Uh, regarding cosplay, there have to be some rules, uh, especially in terms of nudity and weapons, uh, danger and stuff like that. Um, how, uh, what are the rules uh, for the costumes? There are convention-specific rules, but generally the terms are that like your personal area has to be covered um, in regards to nudity. So usually it's like you should wear as much as you would wear on the beach. That shouldn't be any less. And regarding weapons, it's um, very con-specific. So. Some conventions don't allow weapons longer than 1 meter 50, which I had to keep in mind mm -hmm. when I made the sword. So it's 1 meter 45 because although it's a bit bigger in game, I didn't want it to make it so big so I could bring it anywhere. And of course, you can't uh, make weapons from real metal or anything really heavy. So, so um, anything steel related yeah. is out of the question. Yeah, because it's too heavy. Mm. So even if it's uh, not sharp, you could still swing it and I mean you could swing an umbrella and hurt someone but it's their logic and you have to adhere to the rules. Uh, in terms of cosplay what are your next plans and would you actually ever consider a team cosplay because we we seen we've seen amazing cosplays on on the event and actually there in the distance there is a phantom lancer one of the three I saw uh, walking around. Uh, team cosplay yes or no? Um, I'm currently considering with a friend whether we should enter um, a big qualification next year because there are world champion and European championships in cosplay and they're often in groups and I'm considering with a friend whether we should enter but we're, we have quite different tastes uh, so we haven't decided anything. But I have done partner cosplays in the past that were not Dota but they're a lot of fun. Hmm. Um. How can your fans support you? Because I, I assume you have them, uh, and especially in Germany you are uh, 
you have at least heard of the name if you're uh, uh, around in the scene. How can your friends support you personally? Um, they can follow me on Facebook, they can like the pictures. I mean, I'm not really in the cosplay for the money. I, of course, I'm happy if I win prize money at an event just because it covers the costs and helps out a little bit. But honestly, if people just tell me that they like it, that's really the coolest that they can do. Tell your little liker, you heard it here first. Do you have any personal shout outs you want to give? Um, I guess I should shout out my boyfriend because he helped me dress up today and he really doesn't <laughs> like doing that, but he did it anyway, so thanks to him. Okay, thanks to Maruna's boyfriend and well, on to the next interview.